Let me tell you a harsh reality about being in business. It's really tough and most businesses fail. But why is it that some businesses go to the next level? Well, I think they're doing something very different to the ones that are struggling or just about getting by. So when we look at business owners, I like to put them into three separate camps. Camp number one is a business owner that's building themselves a job. Camp number two is a business owner that's building a business. Maybe they've got a few staff, but they're working incredibly long hours to make everything tick over. Now, camp number three is the business owner that's building their business. So it looks like an investment and they're making really decent profits. They've got cash in the bank and they're able to pay themselves a very decent income and they're running their business to the methodology that I'm about to share with you now. Now, I think there's five key differentiators that that camp are doing that the other two are not doing. So let's get into it right now. Now, before I get into the reasons, let me just tell you a little bit about me. I'm running 17 businesses right now. I've got over a thousand staff, so I'm actually doing the do, and that's where I get all these theories and ideas from. But further, I've helped loads of other entrepreneurs and business owners, and the ones that are doing really well do these five things in an abundance. So let's get into it. Reason number one most business owners don't grow their business is because they're spending way too much time on operating their business, where the smart business owners are marketeers of their business rather than operators and doers of their business. And so really what I did when I started out in business, I was on the tours. I had an entertainment business and I was going out gigging and hiring out equipment. And that took a lot of my time away. Then when I got back into my house, I would work on all the administration. I very quickly worked out at the age of 18 that I shouldn't be doing all this doing stuff. I should be spending more time on income generating. That's marketing. And I made a very quick rule with myself. Spend 80% of your time on marketing and 20% of your time on operating. And I employed a lady called Jean when I was 18 years old. She came and worked in our spare bedroom and she done all the accounts, the emails, the answering the telephone. And that just gave me an abundance of more time to go out there and get more customers. So effectively, I became an income generator rather than someone just doing the do. And that's what I think most business owners do. They spend 80% of their time operating their business. And then when they've got some spare time, they might go out there and try and get some more customers. Now, the sad fact is when you start out in business, you became a master marketeer because you had to get some customers or you wouldn't have a business. And then you leisurely stroll into the operating part of your business and you stop going out there and getting more customers. And that happens to be a reason why your business isn't growing because you're not out there bringing in more customers, thus bringing in more income, and you get to the stagnation level where everything just stays the same. And if you carry on doing the same, how can you expect more results? That's the reason number one. Reason number two that most businesses don't grow is they just don't focus on margin. When you've got margin, magic things can happen in your business. Say you buy in a product for a pound and you sell it for one pound 20. You've got about 20 pence or 20% of gross margin there. And that allows you to have some money to pay for staffing. It allows you to do some marketing or does it? Well, I don't think it does because there's not enough margin there. So we want to drive that margin up. How do we drive margin up in a business? Well, you need to have a really strong brand. And when you've got a strong brand, people trust you. They know, like, and trust you. If you deliver a great experience, people are prepared to pay an increased price for that, therefore giving you an increased margin to allow you to deliver on that experience. Maybe you've got limited supply, like a big pop star coming to town. You can't get tickets. The price of the tickets drive up, thus giving the person and selling the tickets higher margin. If you deliver great quality to your customers, maybe you manufacture foods and you do it a way that is so much better quality to the competition, people will pay a margin for that because they want to buy from the best brand, they want to experience the deliciousness of their food and they're prepared to pay for the quality. But here's the reality of it. I think most business owners are working to 30 to 50% gross profit margins. And that's just not enough to deliver on 
great customer service, great training, employing people, research and development to continually innovate the business. So what we want to be doing to do all of that and more is we want to work to 80% plus gross profit margins because we're a small to medium sized enterprise. We're not competing on scale. We need the margin to be able to do all this stuff really well. Let me explain exactly what I mean to you. Well, I manufacture ice cream in one of my businesses. We do it in quite an artisanal way. We use the best possible ingredients, much better ingredients than the rest of the marketplace. It tastes better and we deliver it in a great experience location. People are prepared to pay for that. They want to give that experience to their friends and family so they will pay the margin to have the ice cream from us in that fantastic location and then brilliant quality ingredients that most of the marketplace don't do. Now let's have a look at ice cubes. Now if you're manufacturing ice cubes, how can you deliver an experience with that? You're in a commoditized situation where you're just selling ice cubes with the rest of the marketplace. Everyone has to sell at the similar sort of price and it's just a race to the bottom. You've got hardly any gross profit and it's just boring. So always go for better margins and then you'll have a much better business and you'll invest in growth. Reason number three I think most businesses don't grow is because they start from zero each month. What does that mean? Well, if you sell cars for a living, you sell all your cars that month, your customer doesn't need you again because they've already bought a car. So you've got to find new customers next month, effectively starting from zero each month. What we want to do is get customers for life where they pay us very regularly. I like living by this phrase, a little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. Subscription services like TV subscription is a classic example of this. Now I've done it in my business in a very brick and mortar way. I own visitor attractions and petting zoos. What I did rather than people just coming once or twice a year to pay for admissions, I said, hey, come to our petting zoo and you can sign up to a monthly direct debit where you can come as often as you like for a much lower amount if you sign up to our monthly direct debit. That was great news for us as a business because we now had predictability over cash flow. We saw how many members we had and we had a trickle of income every single month. A little bit of money from a lot of people a lot of the time. And this allowed me to have the confidence to employ people to invest in the business. So I'd like you to take that scenario into your business. How could you create regular income so you're not starting from zero each month? Recurring income is a really smart way of giving you the confidence to grow your business. And here's something that will help. Amex have created the Business Trends and Insights Hub. It's a really cool resource for entrepreneurs and business owners to dive into. Specifically, what we're talking about here is recurring income and retention. There's a whole article about that. But there's so much more than that, so go and check it out. There's a link in the video description. Reason number four most businesses don't grow is because the owner is a solopreneur. They're building a profitable job. And that's not what we want to do in business. You want to build a business, a commercially profitable enterprise that works without you in it. And that mindset is going to help build you for growth. You don't want to be a control freak over everything. If you think about lots of tradesmen, maybe a plumber, he's on the tools or she's on the tools doing the do, and that doesn't give them time to go out there and build a team. What you want to be is a manager of plumbers in the first stage, employing lots of plumbers to be on the tools so that you're out there growing the business and eventually you put a management team in to look after all the plumbers. That's just such a better way to think and that's why I did in my business. I built in people to do the do so that I could be the manager of the business, then the managing director and then the shareholder of the organisation. So but I'm building that commercially profitable enterprise that eventually works without me in it. Reason number five most businesses don't grow is because the owners of the business don't know their numbers good enough. Now they might get a set of annual accounts, but they probably run their business by the cash bank balance. That's right, they use their bank balance as the map or the chart to navigate their business. Well, we want to be much smarter with their numbers and use a monthly profit and loss. Now this is so easy to get with software now and you need to share it with the team and understand what's going on with your business on a monthly basis or preferably a weekly basis and it will tell you if you're making a profit or a loss on a monthly basis, what you're spending on a monthly basis and what income you've got on a monthly basis and you compare it to previous years and previous periods, maybe the last three months or this month compared to last month at the same time last year. This is really important. This is a big, big thing that I do. I create monthly board meetings and monthly management meetings and we use our monthly profit and loss as the navigation tool to help us make our decisions on what we're going to do next with the business. The next big KPI, key performance indicator that I think most 
businesses that are growing and understand is their labor cost to the revenue that the business is bringing in. Say you're in retail, you don't want to spend any more than 15% of your revenue on labor. If you're in childcare or care services, you don't want to spend any more than 55%. If you're in software, it would be much higher. You need to find out what the industry standard is for the labor cost for your sector and apply it as a percentage to your revenue and make sure you've got a hawk's eye on it so that you stay within the limits that you should be. Now, the third one is ACV or average transactional value or average order value. Most business owners are tracking the revenue in terms of turnover that the business is growing, but not tracking their average customer value enough. Now, I've got another hawk's eye on this because I know if you're tracking the average transactional value or the average customer value and that's increasing, usually the increase on that is way more profitable than growing your turnover. Because if you can get more average customer value out of your existing customers, that's way more profitable than spending money to go and get new customers. Now, if you've loved this video and you want to see more videos from Amex, then make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video to help grow your business.